Big thanks to Napoleon Grills for sponsoring this episode. Today I'm going to show you my version of a Black Angus Picanha Brazilian style. I love picanha and I love Brazilian picanha. You know why? Because Brazilians love to do things with skewers and open fires. And it's just something really magical. You know, you just put it on a skewer and then slice it off straight away from the fire. Keep it over the fire, let it crisp up a little bit. A little bit salt, a little bit pepper, that's it. I like that way of barbecue. And I like doing that to my picanha. So I got a beautiful Black Angus Picanha. Beautiful intermuscular fat, big old fat cap. This Black Angus Picanha came from our favorite butcher, Gert Jan. And you gotta know your butchers, man. You gotta know, you gotta befriend your butchers. We're gonna treat this Picanha the Brazilian style. High flames, a lot of caramelization, a lot of heat. The Brazilians slice a Picanha so that they can put it on a skewer like this. So to put this on a skewer correctly, you gotta find the grain. The grains run into this direction. That means that if I want to slice this into steaks, I wanna slice it against the grain. And I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna take the biggest knife that I have and slice it into steaks against the grain. Now we have five beautiful steaks, but I wanna trim a little bit of some of the fat caps because that's just too much. Of course, this is personal taste and you can leave it on if you want. So this way, we can line them up, take the largest one into the middle and get our skewer in so we can sear them off over the open fire in a beautiful traditional way. And the one you have left, I don't know, maybe give it to the dog. And the trimmings, that's golden. You can use that for seasoning your grill grates, fry stuff in it, it's just beautiful golden stuff. But before we're gonna skewer it, I'm gonna slice into the fat cap. You're giving it more surface to let the fat crispen up. The only thing it needs now is salt, which I'm gonna apply after I put it on the skewer. Line it up with the thicker steak into the middle and your skewer is done. For seasoning the fat cap, I'm gonna use fleur de sel. I'm gonna sprinkle it generous and on the meat side, I'm gonna sprinkle half of that amount. Now I'm gonna cook this on the most common design of a barbecue in the world, the kettle grill. And in my case, the Napoleon kettle grill. It's a beautiful, simple grill with a beautiful cast iron grill grate. That's just insane, but we're gonna take it out. Put in some charcoal, three fire starters and light it up. Then let it come up to temperature. And while the barbecue is coming up to temperature, it's the perfect timing to do a chimichurri on the side. For an authentic chimichurri, first you gotta slice up half a cup of parsley, because parsley is the main ingredient in a chimichurri. Then I'm gonna de-seed half a chili pepper and slice it fine. Slice up two cloves of garlic, add a tablespoon of salt to that and press it fine with my knife. Then add it all to a bowl, along with a tablespoon of dried oregano powder, a tablespoon of paprika powder, half a tablespoon of red wine vinegar, half a tablespoon of ground pepper, and a quarter cup of olive oil. Mix it all together and that's your chimichurri. It's so easy and so delicious on the steak. But what if we can make this better? What if we can do it in a Dutch way? We Dutch like mayonnaise. I'm gonna make my own mayonnaise. So I got a cup, I'm adding 500 milliliters of sunflower oil to it, two whole eggs, half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, and a tablespoon of black pepper. Normally I would have added a tablespoon of salt, but the salt comes in later. Now use your immersion blender and blend it all down until you got a smooth mayonnaise-like consistency. And that's how mayonnaises are born. With that out of the way, we're gonna chimichurri it up. We're gonna slice fine the same amount of parsley, along with our two pressed garlic cloves with a tablespoon of salt, a teaspoon of chili flakes, one tablespoon of dried oregano, a tablespoon of paprika powder, and again, half a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. And now that our charcoal is completely lit up, it's time for the picanha. And this part is my favorite part. Here we go. And this is why I took out the cast iron grill grate, because I just can put it on. I can just lay it on, flip it around. It's gonna be fine. And now look at how quickly that goes. We got a very hot fire. And it's already rendering down. You can see the bubbles. And every once in a while, flip it to the fat cap. As you can see, the fat cap is crisping up in the middle. And I'm looking for the beautiful Maillard effect, just like that. And once you develop the beautiful crust and the beautiful render it down fat, then you can take it off and just slice it off. Get yourself a beautiful knife, something that is really sharp, and start slicing off really thin. Mm. 
and look at the juices flowing down. I'm so happy I did this today. So many juices. And then you just flip it around and do the other side as well. And then you have a whole plate full of delicious picanha meat. And then you take it off again, go back to the grill and continue. And then you serve it with the chimichurri and of course the beautiful chimichurri mayonnaise. And then you end up with a beautiful tray of picanha with a beautiful ca fat cap, uh, rendered down and a beautiful sauce. It's just amazing, it's beautiful. Have I already said that it's beautiful? All right, I'm just gonna dig in. Look, that's what you want. Beautiful, and again, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful caramelization with a little bit of rendered down fat from the fat cap. Here it is. So we have this uh, inside joke with each other all day because I'm not the biggest picanha fan around. I mean, there was a time this was my favorite meat of all time and then one time I had a spoiled one and then I was like, okay, I'm done. So can this cure my picanha trauma? <laughs> Let's find out, cheers. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Have I said that it's beautiful? Mm. That's what you want. That's how I want to eat my picanha always. Yeah. You wasn't hungry. No, uh, of course I wasn't. I'm always hungry. If I say I'm not hungry, I'm lying. Some people, they do it indirect, eat it like a roast. I'm not that kind of guy, you know? From time to time, it's fun to do, but I'm just not that kind of guy. I think you cured me. I think you did it. I'm a Brazilian kind of guy, you know? Secretly, Guga, I have posters of you hanging above my bed. This one's to piss off all the Brazilian people out there. I'm sorry. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is nice. Mm, you should make this now. I really like this mayonnaise. And you should definitely try it. The recipe is down below. But it feels like stealing from you guys. And with you guys, I mean all of Brazil. I'm sorry. And now all you gotta do is just get some bread in. Mm. And what you know what we say, when the bread comes in, the dog also comes in. And because Like why? clockwork, Eva's here, as always. Ooh. But seriously, chimichurri and bread, it's already an amazing combination. You know, what I always try to do in my cooking is never upset people. I don't want to steal things. I just want to take it, flip it around, turn it around, do something good with it. For the Brazilians out there, if you uh, want to kick my ass, just, just comment down below, kick my ass. You can do it. Make fun of me, I'm fine with it. I deserved it. We have but, Ava here though. But so. you, yeah, we have Ava, we have protection. But you can kick my ass, I'm fine with it. But try the mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. I want to thank all the patrons and the YouTube members that are supporting our videos like forever. Be nice to each other, start barbecuing, start making the sauce. And uh, eat smakelijk. Keep on grilling. And keep on grilling, exactly. Oh, and, and make this mayonnaise, do it. Make the mayonnaise and click this video. There, that's and video over there.